afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Alyssa Corum and Ed Carson here. We're going to break down the pretty ugly day that we saw on Wall Street, and it was pretty widespread as well, Ed. So we're going to take a look at uh, a couple of names of interest. We did, however, have our, our stock of the day showing some pretty good action. What do you have for us? Yeah, we're going to take a look at United Airlines, which may have been the worst performer in the S&P 500, and Freeport and McMoran, uh, head of earnings, and then, yes, their stock of the day, IDEX Labs. All right. First, a look at the major indexes. So the NASDAQ uh, did close down about nine tenths of a percent for the day, a little bit off of lows, but not by a whole lot. The Dow down uh, about eight tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 down seven tenths of a percent, and the Russell 2000 The hardest hit uh, looks like that uh, small cap index closed down about 2% for the day. We'll run through a bunch of charts here. So Ed, this action here, you know, yesterday it looks like, okay, maybe time for a little bit of a breather here, but it just, the action got worse today. Should investors be really concerned at this point or does it still feel like normal action? Well, the indexes, the major indexes don't look too bad. I mean, the NASDAQ, okay, it's come down, but it found support at the 21-day line. Uh, it's above the March highs. It's well above the 50-day line. So that's not too bad. And then honestly, if you look at the Dow and S&P 500, they were starting to look extended at the end of last week. And so they've pulled back some, but you know, that's not too bad. So you look at those and you go, hey, there's no problem here, really. Uh, you know, the S&P, yeah, the same way. The Russell looks a little worse. Uh, that one went through the 50 day line yesterday. Now it's at the lowest levels of the month, you know, undercutting all that area. And I got to say, leading stocks sort of look more like the Russell. I think that's the real issue. The damage is in the leading stocks. When we talk about looking at the market, you want to look at the major indexes and the leading stocks, and leading stocks are not looking so good. That's right. And growth stocks in particular getting hit hard. So let's take a look at uh, FFTY, the IBD 50 off lows, but really hard hit today. Yeah, and then I mean, we all, really, yeah. Go, yeah. go ahead. No, no, just, yeah, it was just really hard hit. And it's you're seeing mm-hmm. that they're hitting the resistance at the 50 day. Mm-hmm. And then SMH chips, which we uh, had seen as a bright spot in the technology area as uh, the NASDAQ was just starting to turn around, had been trading tightly near highs and it too pulling back to its 50 day. And then talk to us about, uh, the ARK Innovation Fund, ARKK, Tesla at least had been one of the big holdings in there, but this is really the, those high octane speculative growth names uh, and they're continuing to see weakness. Yeah, I mean, while the NASDAQ and the chips, they're sort of near highs. I mean, the more speculative names are having, having more trouble. Tesla's above its 50 data line, but most of the speculative stocks or the highly valued stocks hit resistance around these levels. And so that just shows you how that, it never really strengthened. It got close. And so that's an issue. And uh, mining and energies as well. So XME, the metals and mining stock getting hit another day today. And then we have XLE, the energy select sector spider weakening as well, undercutting its lows within this base pattern. And then we also have KRE, a lot we're going through here, but just underscoring the widespread weakness, regional banks. That was an area, Ed, that we had uh, pointed out recently as showing notable strength and it undercutting its 50-day today. Yeah, I mean, it just it was pretty broad weakness. And yeah, there were some stocks that look okay. Like they don't look too damaged, but if you have a portfolio of stocks of healthy losers and unhealthy losers, that's not a very happy portfolio. I mean, that you can't balance bad losers with good losers. Uh, And so, and this is obviously not good action, but you're just seeing that on and sometimes stocks will hold on or sectors will hold on and then they won't. Mm -hmm. And then jets, which uh, is a a kind of a look at the economic reopening plays airlines. We're going to take a look at United here in a second. It too breaking down below its 50 day for the first time uh, along this run, run, which hasn't been a smooth one. It's been a little choppy, but also weakness here. So it seems like almost everywhere we look, there's uh, some weakness happening. Yeah, and that's just what we're seeing. And just, you know, it's just a very difficult market. It was a tough market to make money in before the last couple of days. And it's just basically impossible in this kind of situation unless you have that lucky stock. And United UAL, 
looks virtually the same as the Jets ETF here. So with uh, United breaking down like this uh, on the quarterly earnings report, look at that volume as well. So these aren't just declines coming in light volume. In some cases they are. But uh, many of the declines that we're seeing right now are coming in this heavy volume. So it seems like investors are, do you think, getting a a little spooked at this point? I I guess it goes back to how concerned should we be about the action that we're seeing underneath the surface? I think there's a lot of concern. I would definitely say with this sector, and I think it was something David Ryan that brought up to my mind, it's not just even when they were doing better, it's the earnings on these stocks. Like uh, if you look okay, it's going to lose a ton of money this year. And then even next year, 288, you know, that's nowhere near what it was making all the years before. So why is, I mean, I know it's not all the way back to pre-Coronas days, but how much more does it have to go given that the earnings are not going to be anywhere what they were in 2018, 19? Uh, So I think that's, that's just a concern for a lot of the airline stocks. You know, what, you know, what is the, what is the future? Is the future justify uh, you know, valuations in this realm. And you can just see really heavy selling on the weekly, breaking through the 10 week line, breaking through the 50 line in the line, back to the old base. So it's, you know, unless you bought very near the, you know, somewhere months ago, you're probably sitting on a loss, you know, and, and there's a very good chance you're sitting on a loss. Uh, and it just isn't good action here. And with the stock trading now about 8% below its 10 week line, it would really need to take a lot for the stock to close less than 2% below that level, which uh, by the end of the week, which we like using as uh, that, that final sell. But when you have a stock that is plunging below that key support level this early in the week, round tripping those huge gains, it seems like those sell signals take precedence in this situation. I would think so, unless you have a really long-term gain, like bought near the bottom for some reason, uh, it seems like it's a good reason just to be out. Mm-hmm. And next on our list, FCX. And this stock has earnings coming up, coming from a hot group, the metal ores in the mining group. We have a trend line here that we were uh, pointing out a uh, breakout above that level one day before we had the official breakout over the double bottom. But with the stock coming down to that buy point with earnings two days away, even though it's still trading above or right around its 10 week line, this seems like pretty concerning action for uh, an investor who made a relatively recent buy. Yeah, I mean, it's below the official buy point or the handle buy point if you drew that. Yeah, maybe you're up, maybe if you somehow got on that trend line just absolutely perfectly. But, you know, it would have been, you would have had to raise questions two days ago. At the end of last week, you would have been had to be thinking, well, do I really want to hold this into earnings? I mean, maybe if it really has a great week, I'll have a good cushion. But you're either down a couple of percentage points or flat, uh, unless you bought it, you know, months ago, you're, you're not on a gain. So you, you know, you just have to watch out. Earnings can come in. They can be pretty nasty. It sold off pretty hard. Actually, that was sort of like the last time to buy. But right after earnings, it had a pretty sharp sell-off. So you don't know how this is going to go. Uh, so it, it, it's just difficult. And I think that's going to happen with a lot of stocks. A lot of stocks, a lot of the chip makers or chip gear makers, they've come down towards their buy points mm-hmm. with earnings coming up. And all of a sudden, these stocks that look like easy holds, all of a sudden, there's some real questions uh, about what you should be doing with them. Right, because this year, this has been one of the industry groups that we've been pointing out as showing strength. So to see a a leading name in this group having a a bit of a tough time heading into this earnings report. And if you take a step back, the chart's not broken or anything. Again, it's still still above its 10-week line, but it's, I, I think once again, underscoring the difficult market, as you've been talking about that, that we've been in this year, these rotations back and forth uh, between some of the economic recovery groups to the technology and growth stocks. And it seems like we're just continually seeing this rotation, even though the the major indexes, when you're taking a step back, are holding up pretty well, all things considered. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
And last but not least, IDXX. This is one of IBD's long-term leaders. So we'll take a look at the monthly chart here shortly. But first, a quick look at the daily. This stock is building the right side of a base and gained seven tenths of a percent today. So uh, outperforming uh, from that sense uh, amid widespread weakness. Ed, what do you like about this stock? Well, I mean, there's some nice, the fundamentals are pretty strong. And for a few quarters, it was accelerating. It slowed down a little bit, but you know, pretty high growth. Pet ownership went up you know, in the COVID crisis. And I don't think that a lot of people see, see those trends continuing. So this does vet products and services. So that those demands are gonna pick up. I bet a lot of people wait, delayed vet appointments um, because you and I both know you couldn't actually go into those vet appointments. Mm -hmm. and it's a lot more fun to, to be with your cat or dog uh, during those visits. Uh, you know, the relative strength line isn't great right now, but on a longer term basis, it's been a really strong performer. And so, years and years where, yeah, there'll be some little periods of down, but from there you could even go back to 2000 really is how long it's sort of been outperforming the market and just a uh, pretty tremendous run. You know, it may seem, oh, this is dull. This, this is not dull. This is a lot of fun. If you could have this stock going from, you know, like a six to 400 over that time. Uh, so, you know, in, in that situation, it's, it's really nice to see, you know, like having some stocks like this, um, you know, this is why we have the long-term leaders list because there's some stocks, sometimes it's nice to balance out your portfolio with stocks that aren't so volatile that, that tend to outperform over the long-term. Mm -hmm. And so at this point with where the stock is uh, less than 5% above the 10 week line, investors can size their positions off of that level and use that as their stop area. But with it being a long-term leader and with the market being where it is and earnings two weeks around the corner, how should investors weigh all of those factors and uh, decide whether or not to put this in their portfolio now or wait for some sort of handle or pullback or just wait for the earnings report? I mean, I think, yeah, I'd probably wait for the earnings report because if you wait for a handle by the time that forms, you're only about a week away from the earnings. Uh, and also I think, look at one more time at the daily chart, there's one other little flaw. The volume on the, on the up days has been sort of weak. I mean, you know, we've seen that with a lot, the whole market seems to have lighter volume, but that's a little less encouraging. So, I, you know, I'd rather see some real power come in, maybe a pullback, because it's maybe a little more vulnerable to a pullback. If it pulls back, forms a handle, is near the 10-week line, breaks out on earnings, that seems like a good opportunity in that situation. But yeah, I think right now in this environment uh, that just mm -hmm. waiting until, until that uh, comes out is probably be the way to go. All right. Thanks so much, Ed, for that analysis. And thank you all for tuning in. We're going to continue the conversation tomorrow morning on IBD Live, our daily morning live stream, where we're sharing our screens, talking about actionable names. We have special guests who come on uh, almost once a week, I'd say, if not more that we're going to have in the future. Mark Minervini was on on Monday so with some really great insights. And our team of experts is going to be on tomorrow with more. So we hope you join us, investors.com slash IBD live. Thanks for tuning in everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.